Born March 28, 1515, St. Teresa of Avila was one of ten children. The site of her birth is now home to the convent of St. Teresa in Avila, Spain, shown here. From an early age, Teresa was very devoted to God. At age seven, she ran away from home with her brother, Rodrigo, to go to Moorish territory, where the children hoped to achieve martyrdom by being beheaded for Christ. The attempt at martyrdom was rather unfortunately thwarted by the children's uncle, who found the children and returned them safely to their home. In November of 1535, Teresa ran away from her home in Avila again, this time to go to the Carmelite convent of the Incarnation in Avila. She ran away despite the fact that her father, Don Alonso, did not want her to leave home. However, Teresa, who spent several years boarding in a convent, enjoyed being with the nuns and was considering becoming one herself. She joined the Carmelite order, hoping to devote herself to an ascetic lifestyle of prayer and modesty. However, many of the nuns in the convent with her wore jewelry and had visitors, things that Teresa found to be vanities. She felt that during her time in the Carmelite convent of the Incarnation, she had lost herself. She later said, To reach something good, it is very useful to have gone astray and thus acquire experience. With this in mind, Teresa worked as a reformer for the Order for most of her life. Teresa eventually started her own Carmelite convent in 1563 in order to enforce a stricter lifestyle on herself and other Carmelite nuns. The convent, called St. Joseph's Convent, allowed her to focus solely on her relationship with God as she prayed and worked in His name. In her first five years spent in the convent, Teresa experienced many visions. The most famous vision that St. Teresa saw was the one that she called the transverberation of the heart. As described in her autobiography, the angel appeared to me to be thrusting the spear of fire into my heart and piercing my very entrails. When he drew it out, he seemed to draw them out also, and left me all on fire with a great love of God. In 1567, Teresa gained permission to start more Carmelite convents throughout Spain. Within 20 years, she had established 16 new convents. During this time period, she met St. John of the Cross, shown here, who helped her reform the Carmelite sisterhoods and mirrored her efforts as he reformed the Carmelite brotherhoods. St. Teresa of Avila died in October of 1582, just 15 years after she began to found more Carmelite convents. Since her death, many miracles have been accredited to her name. For example, her monastic cell in Avila, pictured here, was said to have filled with a delightful scent just after she passed. Upon the exhumation of her body 330 years later, the same fragrance came from her coffin. The fragrance is now known as the odor of sanctity by the Catholic Church. It is also said that her severed hand can cause miraculous happenings. St. Teresa was canonized alongside St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. Isidore, St. Philip Neri, and St. Francis Xavier by Pope Gregory XV in 1622. In 1867, she was declared the patron saint of Spain, and in 1970, Pope Paul VI made her the first female doctor of the church in Catholic history. Because of her perseverance in reforming the Carmelite order, her many miracles, and her extraordinary titles as patron of Spain and doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila is a perfect role model for Catholics throughout the world. She used her call to make a difference in the church world and inspired many with her story. St. Teresa of Avila is, and always will be, a great example of the mold which Catholics are expected by God to fill. As St. Teresa said so long ago, we shall never learn to know ourselves except by endeavoring to know God. For, beholding his greatness, we realize our own littleness, his purity shows us our foulness, and by meditating upon his humility, we find how very far we are from being humble.